Amen. Amen, family. How we doing? Yeah. Is our marriage still alive? Yeah. We've been given the five aspects of marriage. Come on, bro. It actually, this whole conference comes from uh, the, the the five studies that are given to newly marrieds. But uh, we thought in order to show the five aspects of marriage, we're going to give a skit of the opposite of the five aspects of marriage, all right? So you guys got to be interactive and see what is not happening here that needs to happen. Amen. And we'll see if you can guess what aspects are missing. That's my wife. I love her. <laughs> hey, babe. Hey, where are you? I just got out of a study here, and I'm on my way to a D time, and then I'm going to get with Willie. He wants to get baptized. Wait, what, what time is your D time? Well, it's at 3, and then the study with Willie is at 5. Caesar, we have family time at 3. That's true. <laughs> but I thought I told you that Willie was going to get baptized, and I need to study with him at that time. No, you... You didn't tell me that. We you were taking a shower. a shower and I shouted it. You oh, sounded fired up. <laughs> I am so tired that you always do this. I just, you know what? Goodbye. She is struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, text Courtney. <laughs> hey, Court. Hope you're having an awesome day. I know I am, but my wife is struggling. Could you please call her right now? <laughs> Hey, bro, I'm going to study. I can't till later tonight. Oh. Hey, George, could you just do the study without me, bro? I need to go home and take care of a situation. <laughs> yeah, just tell him to repent and get baptized for the forgiveness of his sins. Amen? All right, man. Love you. Let me know how it goes. <coughs> go home. Ugh. I'll just be super humble and everything will be fixed. <laughs> of marriage. The first one is communication. So what's the most challenging thing about communication in a marriage? Things change. Things change. So yeah, Willie didn't want to get baptized yesterday. But now <laughs> Willie wants to be free from his sins. And I'm telling my wife, free Willie. And she's not having it. She just wants me to free her from the kids. And so what's the solution? It's what Joel said. Have a weekly D time. And, and even do a nightly follow-up. Is the plan tomorrow still the same? Are those studies still going on? Is that D time still going on? And yet, communication involves understanding. So my part should have led in communication. My wife's part should have been understanding. There's a family time. That's awesome. It needs to happen. But if somebody 
if there's an emergency that came up, we could talk through how to make next week better, but being understanding in the chaos of life. Amen? Amen. The second one is self-control. Self-control. My wife needs to talk about this. <laughs> so, self-control, I think that's one of the areas that as women we could really struggle with. I know that's definitely one of my great weaknesses is just self-control. And, um, you know, there's a, this part of your brain that's like the animal part of your brain that it's supposed to be for, like, survival, you know, and things like that. But it can really tend to take over. And I know for me, when I start getting really passionate about something, it's not the best time to make decisions. Right. And um, I've had to learn that in my anger, that anger is super damaging to a relationship. And in my anger... I can't, I just simply can't make decisions, and it, I need to shut up, basically, essentially. Um, and there's a scripture that, you know, the, the Bible gives us for, for self-control, because God knows that we are passionate beings, and that could be a really great thing, but also a really horrible thing um, when we use it in a sinful way. And that's why in James 1, 19, it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. And so, you know, when our spouses become angry, it's so important that we don't meet them with that same anger because that's super damaging to our relationships. The third aspect of humility of uh, aspects is humility. Yeah. And um, Proverbs 12, 1, sh someone shared it, but he who hates correction is okay. stupid. And yet the Bible calls us stupid when we don't want to be corrected. And as husbands, I know for me, it's harder when it's coming from your wife. Yeah. I mean, there's something that Debbie has told me over and over. And then as soon as Joel tells me, I'm like, oh, my, that's so true. <laughs> and she's looking at me like, I've been telling you that. Because it, it's, it's, it causes for us to be humble. I know that um, when we first got married, I really quickly learned that I'm going to be corrected a lot by my wife. And it's sometimes by her words, it's sometimes by the situation, it's sometimes by how she's doing. Because if she's not doing well spiritually, then i got to take the correction from God. Then I'm not doing a good job in leading her. If she doesn't look excited and calm and at peace... My first temptation could be prideful. But why isn't she getting spiritual like me? But in reality, if I have humility, I'm going to go, oh, man, what did I do to cause this or not prevent this? Uh, when we first got married, there was a time where, you know, she, I'm trying to argue with her about something. And she's like, babe, really humble. You know, and that she's humble. You just know. And she was just being humble. And she's like, honey, I think your heart is hard. I go, no, it's not. And then I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going to go on a prayer walk and I'll be back. And I'm like, I'm going to show her that I'm not being prideful. So, so I leave and I'm like, why can't I pray? It's because I'm having pride. And so I remember I'm like, I'm just going to holy flip the Bible. So when, you're, when you're struggling, you just hold, like, holy flip. And I flipped it in a holy fashion. And I saw the scripture, it was Job 11. It said, how I wish I could be there to silence your pride. I'm like, oh, whoa. And so I'm like, what's the solution for pride? Let God humble you. Let God correct you. Let others in your life correct you. So that your marriage could be one of humility. Amen? Amen. The fourth aspect of marriage is respect. My wife wants to share Again, I think as women, respect is something that could be really difficult for us to do because it is the thing that God calls us to do to our husbands. And, uh, you know, I asked Caesar, what's the hardest part about, um, you know, just not being respected? Like, what, what's like the thing that really gets to you? And he said, it just makes it really hard to lead when I'm not feeling respected. It makes me feel really insecure and leading our family when you're not respecting me. And I was like, whoa, you know, that's huge because we want to be submissive and we want to help our husbands, but we would like to take control too. 
And, you know, I was looking at the definition of respect. It's a feeling of admiring someone or something that is good, valuable, important, etc. And that's why I think the, the practical that the Bartholomews gave was so life-changing, really. And that was, you know, think about the things you really admire about your spouse. Think about the things that you adore. Because when Satan starts to put those things, those attacks in your mind, and it makes you want to stop respecting your husband, then you can remember what's true, what's right, what's admirable, what's lovely, the things that the scriptures tells us to think about. Amen. Amen. The last aspect of marriage and the 300th thing we've talked about today <laughs> is forgiveness. And some of these have been repeated because they are super important. In Hebrews chapter 12, let's close out here. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 14. says, make every effort to live in peace with all men. Amen, wives? <laughs> and all women. Amen, husbands? Amen. And to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. You know, there's one thing that's helped me see the grace of God more than anything, and that's my wife. I mean, the, the day that I married her on October 12, 2014, I just understood the grace of God a lot more. When I sin it up and she forgives me, I'm just amazed and I can see the glances of God's grace like never before. But in the same way that your wife or your husband helps you see the Lord is as quick as it could help you to not see the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's why I appreciate Bartholomew sharing that marriage is for holiness. And if you don't have a holiness in your marriage, you're not going to see God in your marriage. I know that about a month ago, me and my wife got into a bump and uh, we drove up to Seattle to get some help. Um, and, and Joel sat us down and he, he took us to a nice view and gave us some food. That's how you know discipling is coming. And, then, and he just said, if you guys live with a mediocre marriage, then you're going to live a mediocre life and have mediocre impact. Wow. And that just woke me up because I said, I don't want to have a mediocre impact on this world. We want to evangelize the world. We want to save our kids. But that's not going to happen if we are stuck in a mediocre marriage. Mm -hmm. And so I made it this effort, make every effort to not have any bitter roots. And you know what's interesting? How many of us could actually, don't raise your hand, but say, well, there's bitter roots in me. There's bitter roots in my marriage. Yeah. Not many of us would think that. Because when we think bitterness, we think someone that's like outrageously like going, oh, I hate my wife. Like that person's bitter. <laughs> but it says bitter roots, meaning it's not grown, it's still a root. Meaning it could, if you don't take care of it, it could grow up to cause trouble. Good point, bro. And so I hope this weekend really produces in us a mentality of let's make every effort. Because everything we talked about, it's a, it's a matter of effort. Right. Growth. Learn to love growth. Learn to love each other. Learn to grow with each other. And when we help hurt each other, then we forgive each other. And we can't forgive each other unless we understand each other and understand what's going on in our hearts. So let's get these aspects of marriage down so we can evangelize the world. Amen? In our generation.